As our former Deputy Prime Minister, our first guest is used to public speaking, from announcing government policy to talking to local constituents in his regional surgery. His, this former MP for East uh, Hull, or Hull East as it's probably known around those parts, sorry, has had plenty of experience addressing people en masse. Uh, this hopefully is going to come in handy because very soon he's going to be addressing the listeners of Radio 4 when he takes to the airwaves all in the name of Comic Relief. Please welcome Lord John Prescott. Over. Did you notice I held my stomach in after you, you talking about all the body work? No, I did too. <laughs> Do you have a thing about your body? You don't. Don't get me on that. Oh, really? Oh, no. Oh. My wife gets on enough about that. Does she? It is a woman's thing. Do, uh, you've got, you must well, listening to you uh, outside, it's remarkable. I always think that uh, women dress for women, but with men in mind. I think you're right. And I think mm. also that they're so obsessed about the body. Don't let's ignore the body. But, you know, I think is it Gok on that television gets women to get proud of their body oh, rather than, know. you know, into the most awkward situations. Yeah. But I think that's wonderful. He transforms them into yeah. feeling the, the beauties in the mind as well as the body, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Would you, would you be gocked? Super. Pardon? Could you be gocked? I think I probably could be, but I think I've given up. You know, at 72 years of age, of you've got to give up it? at some stage. And I don't have to wear a bikini anyway. No, you're so all right. Exactly. I'm all right. You don't have to go through all that bikini wax and all that sort of thing. No, you don't want that. It's not pleasant, John. It's not pleasant. You know. <laughs> uh, um, John, tell us how you're going to be raising uh, money for Red Nose Day this year. Yes, I think it's fantastic. Over the years they've been going, they've raised something like £500 million. Pounds. That's a lot of money, but yeah. they don't just concentrate in UK, but they're also in Africa, where there's an awful lot of things to be done there. So I welcome that. Mm. For example, for £8, you can actually give, for something like 20 babies, a whole series of um, medication to deal with malaria. I mean, that's something. It's yeah. not them from dying. Mm. They're dying every six seconds mm. from malaria. But also a thing that I'm personally involved in, some money will go to what an organisation called BEAT, bulimia. I went through a period of that, you know, and uh, I was amazed just how many men go through it and didn't realise it till I set, made my comment about it. But what I found most rewarding was mothers writing to me about their daughters and saying, oh, thank goodness you've made your, goodness you've made your statement, because they always think you're a weak person. You haven't got the yeah. mental strength. Well, they never thought I was weak, but I had <laughs> gone through that. So yeah. I think that's helpful, and some John, of the money goes towards that. What, what triggered your own battle with bulimia? Because um, everybody has their own experience of it, and, and no, nobody kind of, it, there's no kind of fixed pattern to it. Um, so for you, what was, what was that? Well, you go through the psychology of eating and thinking, I can get rid of it, it won't increase the weight. It is connected to your whole feeling, your body and your weight, etc. And I think it's connected to stress as, stress as well. Mm. And I found I was constantly being sick, went to see the doctor about it, forcing myself to be sick, isn't mm. it? You eat a lot and then you force yourself to be sick. And I went to a doctor and he said, oh, I'll go and see this doctor. And I went to the doctor and it was all the women in the waiting room, so I crept in the mm. corner, you know. I think this is terrible, a man's not supposed to have this kind kind of uh, yeah, problem yeah. and uh, eventually we talked it through and I got rid of it and it is possible to get rid of it but I didn't announce it while I was the Deputy Prime Minister because with our wonderful press you could imagine yeah, the sort yeah, of yeah. things they would say yeah. but I did think it was a way I could get over to people I had a chance to have the publicity make the point and say to a lot of people and particularly men who didn't think they had the problem but were going through all those symptoms as soon as you explained it they think my god I've been doing that mm. and I can deal with it yeah. I've dealt with it mm. and so Still, still got weight. I mean, that is always the problem. I mean, everybody thinks about that. But at the main, I got rid of that. It was associated with stress. But the ones I think um, feel very sorry about is mums and daughters. You know, they yes. see the daughter going through yeah. that stress oh, and that strain, yeah. the mother's concerned. They've got to feel they can help them get out of this. You can. Can I say to girls listening in, <laughs> you can get out of it. You just, there's nothing wrong with you. You haven't got mental instability. You've just got to deal with the problem. Deal with it, and you can have happiness inside as well as outside. Oh, I think it's very brave of you to say that, John. 
you leave yourself wide open for criticism, but it is, you know, you'll, you'll know if you've suffered with it yourself, and I have in my teenage years, it is something you can overcome, but only with, with constant discussion and debate. So thank you for bringing it to the fore with us today. I did it for diabetes about a couple of years before because I discovered that diabetes. And you, when you get older, you think it's just tiredness. No, it isn't. And it can get very serious unless yeah. you deal with it. Mm. And so that was the first thing that encouraged me to reach out to other people. I have a chance to talk to the media engage with people, and the second one was bulimia. Well, um, the, the work that Comet So I'm quite a head case, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that has been said. Yeah. <laughs> now, what are you doing for Comet Relief? Because um, you've twitted yourself into a position, haven't you? And you've found yourself a new role with Radio 4. Explain to us what you're going to be doing. Well, I was a seaman for ten years, and I used to listen to that weather forecast. Have you heard it? I came home last yeah. night, switched it on. Never heard it. Now we're we talking about you sleep I'm properly here. No, but I'm at sea as well. I go I... to sea quite a lot. Oh. Never. Yeah, we well, what were you doing at half past eleven then? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get on to it. We were talking it. earlier, weren't we? That when you listen to that weather forecast, it's actually it's they've, they've got a they've got a tone, haven't they? They go ding. It's the shipping ding. forecast. Shipping weather forecast, me shipping forecast. And the thing is, it actually could send you to sleep, though, couldn't it? Oh, yes. it could do. And, of course, all no, the press does. is standing by that I'm going to stumble all over the words, right? How can I say to those editors, usually public school twits, but basically <laughs> to say, say to them who are able to pronounce the words, if I get it absolutely right and I think it will, will you give some money to Comic Relief? Yeah. yeah. But I do remember basically going to sleep, listen, it's got a rhythm oh, to it, the it. sea, yeah. it's oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, no, Dog a fisher bite. Yeah. <laughs> but Dog I'm not going to do it exactly. They <laughs> say humba. <laughs> If you come from all, you, you say, don't um, say all or yeah. humba, you say umba. umba. So I'm going to put my little bit in. Dog a fisher bank. Dog a fisher bank. <laughs> I'm the Before North Before we Cena. lose this show into the ether, <laughs> um, John, um, could we ask you to rehearse uh, your, 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 this moment uh, with Radio 4? We've written a forecast for you. You have. Just to see if you can get your tongue around it. Well, is it... <laughs> is it all... Okay, go for it. Is it all right? Oh, here here I go. I didn't write this, so, you know... This is the shipping forecast, brought to you by the Loose Ladies Weather Office. There are warnings of a heat wave as Zoe Tyler's bedroom is showing some of the hottest temperatures on record. <laughs> However, the cold front has been hanging around Sherry Houston's sex life, <laughs> showing no sign of warming up, ever. <laughs> Kate Thornton is looking stormy, but promises to brighten up oh. later. And Colleen <laughs> Nolan is as windy as usual. <laughs> With everything veering south imminently. <laughs> and, that, and that completes the Loose Women Shipping Bulletin. Yeah. 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 On that note, we're going to take a quick breather, but there'll be more from John after the break and Lord of the Dance. Michael Flatley will be joining us a little later, too. We're back in three. <laughs> to say that the former Deputy Prime Minister, Lord John Prescott, is still with us. Yeah. Now, John, um, I, I never had you down as a tweeter, but you certainly are, and I checked your Twitter page, and you were a bit nervous about coming on Loose Women, weren't you? You, you, asked, you asked your fellow tweeters for, for advice. I did, and uh, they sent me the advice. I mean, first of all, when I asked them whether I should have a Blackberry when I first started or an iPhone, they said, well, get them both, you've got two Jags. So <laughs> th there's a bit of humour there. So I asked hey. on this count, I'm coming on uh, Loose Women, what should I do? And they said, Run. oh, what should you take? <laughs> no, the first one was take chocolate, because yeah. you're famous oh, for chocolate. I like that and one. the second one was take Carver's. And my wife says those ladies drink real champagne, not oh, Carver's. Yeah. No, and don't. another one said take a pair of earplugs. <gasps> Oh that, that was nasty, wasn't it? Not nasty. But that, <laughs> that was a twit on Twitter. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, somebody tweeted <laughs> in with a question. Well. I don't tweet, no. Don't I, I do. No, no, she no, I do. I'm a tweeter, yeah. Well, Claire's, Claire's tweeted all on the left. She's on the subject of Jag. She says, do you still have two? Do you still have two? Yeah. Jaguars? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I had a government car. I only ever had one Jaguar. Uh, and my wife didn't like the idea of the XGS, which I had, right? She said she couldn't get out of it. I offered her to get one of those little round tables where you can swing around and get out of the car. <laughs> you know? She wasn't really appreciative of that. Oh. But when we, I was out of government, so both the second and the 14 years old, so I now have two Jags, yeah, and they're great. Oh, good, good for you. you. Um, I've got a question here from Fiseo, I think. Fiseo. It says, John, you were a key member of Parliament but didn't come from Oxford or Cambridge like a lot of other MPs. Did you find you had to prove yourself more because of that? Um, well, I've always think... Um, 
you're as good as anyone about, so I never get worried too much about that. But I did go to a Ruskin college, which is a labour college. It's not part of the Oxford University. That taught me always to never feel anyone's better than you and get on with it. Yeah. Uh, I do have me a uh, bit of difficulties with the public school people, you know, they do the highbrow, aren't they? Seven yeah. percent of the population. None of you have hybrid school, are you? No, no, can't no. Tell. Oh, I knew what on this women. So you get on, you get on with the job, you get the attacks, language. I mean, it has been a problem for me, there's no doubt about it. Okay. And they constantly bring it up against us and I have to live with it. But you know, when I was doing Prime Minister's questions, there was a leader called Milosevic, right? But you know, I could never split the words up. So you know, sometimes I, I'm at the Prime Minister's box and I go, Milosevic. <laughs> I think nobody will listen if I do it quickly. Yeah. <laughs> no, yes, they did. So, you know, you've got to live with that. So, so when you you're are you still in touch with your old mates, Toby yeah. and Gordon? Oh, no, my old mates were off the Britannic 50 oh, years ago. Right we now. meet every year, all the seamen off the Britannic ship. Oh, the Canada are able to give us uh, a meal they put together and we all get... We don't drink as heavy as we did then, but uh, that's nice getting together. Tony and Gordon, yeah, Tony rings me up and uh, he gave me a message the other day on the phone. I'd done an article in G2 with some controversial comments Ooh. in it. And uh, he said, oh, just got the article. Fell off the chair laughing. Good, see you again soon. <laughs> so I keep in touch with uh, Tony. Gordon's a bit more reserved. <laughs> so I haven't seen Gordon much, but uh, a great guy. Both of them are great. They're always difficult, trying to hold them both together mm, from yeah, time to time. I take them to and I took them to dinner at my flat to get over the difficulty. Did you? Yeah. And I thought, Christ, get him down the chair. Gordon says, this chair's a bit low. <laughs> I said, well, my skill as a waiter, I can get you a chair. So I got him a higher chair and I turned to Tony and I said, would you like a higher chair, Tony? No, I'm used to Gordon looking down on me, he said. No. <laughs> in his memoirs that um, he, he always thought that you had an old-fashioned view of women. Um, would you agree with that? Do, do you think... Well, you'll have to define what you mean by old-fashioned about women. What well, do you mean by... that women should it? stay at home. That, I think that what he was inferring was that you, you were... Macho. Old-fashioned. Kind of, you know, that, that... Well, I'm quite proud of what I am, and I don't think uh, I underestimate, though sometimes I think it is with my wife over many years, much more intelligent than I probably gave her credit for. She now does her own programme, she's written her book, well, and this is somebody who hadn't done this for 50 years, mm. so I'm immensely proud of her, right? Mm -hmm. And I, my wife would say, she likes to keep home, and it's important to her. She doesn't like people thinking you've got to be a career woman. Mm. There's a role whichever you choose, mm -hmm. as long as you're not forced into that. As long but as you're I'm, happy, isn't it, I think? I do remember reading a book called Woman's Room, and it struck me that a woman who had children then was cut out, she was a university person, then had no life whatsoever, just looking after the kids while the man went off. And that struck me, it can be a very tough life in those circumstances. So if women are doing what they want to do and you work with them in partnership, and that's what's happened in my life, I've every respect for them. Okay. Can we Can just come to... And by the way, I prefer to work with women who are much more reliable than men in working in working situations. Really? Do you, you think can so? rely Is that on in your experience? Them. I think that's true, they are. I think most people who are in that, they're very conscientious. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to have a lot of They tell you if they think it's right or wrong. Mm. True. And I've been very fortunate having women who are strong in mind, got on with the job, and you could rely on them. And that's important in my game because you need the support. You do, can yeah. I just come to you now? Gavin and Stacey. No, oh, yeah. no. Go on, Gavin and Stacey. What made you do that? Well, it's when I was uh, doing a programme on class. Right. And I think the guy in it, I can't remember, is uh, one yeah. of the um, out of Gavin and Stacey. The one who didn't get married, did it? The one, I, I'm sorry, I can't think of the name now. Not Smithy. Yeah, Smithy. Yeah, but Messi, Messi was on. She'd been doing this programme about she used to see me up in London or something. Oh, and right. my son said to me, look, you're in that area in Wales, they want you to do a bit on a programme. And I said, OK. He said, he'll come and do an interview with you on class if you go and do this wedding scene. So I was in the area, so I said, OK, I did it. You know what amazed me most about that? Yeah. How many MPs came up to me and said, bye, that was great, you got on Gavin and Stacey. <laughs> I had never heard of yeah. Gavin and Stacey, to there be truthful. Yeah. Well, with Nessa. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I knocked on the door during the, uh, one of the elect general election, and a fellow came to the door and I said, you're going to vote Labour, lad? He said, uh, yeah, I am. I said, well, was it the education? Was it health, employment? What's <laughs> what you're supporting? <laughs> In fact, you were on Gavin and Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> It's been wonderful it's having your company you. today. Thank you, John. Good luck with Comic Relief yeah. and, um, and well done on helping with the very fine work that they do there. It's Lord John Prescott, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.